Hello there, Merry Christmas, and welcome back to another Wi-Fi Sheep Tech video with me, Tom. Now, as you may have noticed, um, I've got quite a collection of laptops here. Most of these have either been gathered over the years or donated to my Shrewsbury Net computing group. So we reloaded the operating systems and uh, we used them with education, training, that sort of thing. Now, many of them are still relatively decent machines, but they will have certain issues, certain problems. Observe, this is probably about a 12 year old Sony laptop, PC laptop. If I get the damn thing open, there we go. So if I power this on, you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah, no operating system. Quite understandably, most of these machines have actually had their OS's wiped which means we're either going to need, in this case, a Mac OS or a Windows boot disk to get these machines up and running again. Of course, here on Wi-Fi Sheet, we like to do things a little bit differently. So I have been looking for alternative operating systems, stuff that's gonna work and you know be interesting to use. And I found something that I'm really excited about that I want to share with you. It's a new beta open source free operating system called Haiku. This is the official website for the operating system project and all we want to do is click download it now remember this is still in beta uh, and we can download the dvd installation image so we're coming up down here to direct download now depending on which system you want to use i actually recommend using the 32-bit version the reason being that's going to be considerably better if you're going to be running on older hardware like i am the 32-bit version is also backwards compatible with BOS, which was the forerunner to Haiku. So you can actually run BOS software on Haiku if you run the 32-bit version. So we'll select a mirror. Um, we'll, we'll, save, we'll save France. It's nearer to where I am in the UK. And we'll download the zip file like so. Okay, once that's done, you're going to have something that looks a little bit like this, which is a zip file. You can open it, extract, extract the zip file rather. Now, just take a moment. And from that, you're going to end up with a folder. And in that folder, you'll have a readme file and you'll have the ISO. The ISO image can then be read to a CD, or in this case, you'll need a DVD. Uh, because of the size of the image, 1.16 gigabytes. Uh, on the Mac, what I do is use the Disk Utilities tool. So if you go into Applications, down to Utilities, and Disk Utility is there. There is the IQ ISO, and then we could simply put the disk or insert a blank disk into our drive click burn and it says waiting for disk insert i put a disk in and then i can from that burn myself the master disk so i click and burn and then there we go so here is the sony machine that i want to try and use heiku with and i have here my copy wonderful label and a blank written dvd r Probably should label the disc really, I haven't done. So if you can get away with that, I'd uh, label the disc. So let's try this in this laptop and see what happens. So that's this machine's BIOS. can now hear it reading the disc. So there is the system splash screen. It's worth noting that if you boot from the DVD, it's going to be relatively slow to get up and running and loaded. If we install this directly onto the hard drive, it will boot a lot quicker. Unfortunately, I'm not getting past the boot screen. It's not actually loading the desktop. That's annoying, because I really would have loved to have run this on this. Oh dear. Okay. Um, 
There we go. And check the disc. Uh, let's try another machine, see if we get any better results. That's a bit disappointing. Okay, this is a Fiditu Siemens laptop, which, if I just open it up, is an old 4-3 square ratio machine. So I think this has got a date from the very early 2000s. So let's just see what this one does. We turn it on. Very uh, dull screen on that. I don't know if we can bring the brightness on that up. So I can turn that a little bit so you see if you can actually see it. There we go. So again, no operating system found, same sort of situation. So we'll try our disk in this drive. Power down the machine. Power back up and see what happens this time. Ah, we have a desktop. So we're given this installation screen and it asks us for a language. So English, and in my case, United Kingdom. And we'll say boot to desktop just for the minute. See if we can actually get to the desktop on this machine. And you can actually now see that the Fiditri Siemens laptop has managed amazingly to boot to a working desktop. And we can actually now go ahead and install this operating system directly onto the machine. So if you have a PC laptop, there's about a 50-60% chance that it will actually work and work relatively well. Okay, so that's PC. But what about Mac machines? Before we go any further, these two Mac laptops may look very similar to each other and they are of a similar age. However, this one is an iBook G3 and this one is a MacBook. The difference being the iBook range used the Motorola PPC G3 processor, whereas the MacBook range used one of the early Intel Core Duo chips. For HiQ to work properly, it has to run on what we call x86 architecture. x86 is another word for PC or Intel chips. So this iBook with its PPC Motorola processor, in this case the G3, isn't going to be compatible unfortunately. However, this slightly later machine, be it an early one with only a gigabyte of RAM on board, will be fine for our purposes. And it's this computer I want to recondition with the new HiQ operating system. Okay, so we've got the MacBook we're going to install HiQ onto, and I've got my current MacBook which will be taking the picture recording which you're going to see shortly when we get this machine booted up. So at the moment, this computer is off. It has got a working copy of Mac OS X on it. So what we need to do is we need to power up. So this MacBook is booting into an earlier version of Mac OS X. I've got the disk here, so we'll put the disk in and we're gonna try and force a restart if we can. So there's a restart. So put the disk in, hit restart. Hold down C on the keyboard, and that will force it to read the disk. So when I got to the Haiku loading screen again, capture card hasn't actually captured anything at the minute, so we'll uh, we'll just give that a moment. Again, as with the PC laptops, this will take a while just because we are actually reading off a DVD. You now join us at the welcome screen and we need to select which language we're going to use. So we'll say English and then we'll hit United Kingdom. 
Now, it has the boot to desktop, which we could do to evaluate, but I want to do a full install on the system. This will wipe the previous macOS operating system and all data on this computer. So you have to make sure that you do actually want to do this, which I do. So I'll say run installer. Continue. And we can now select HD there. And we can begin our installation. Again, HQ is such a small operating system that this really shouldn't take too long to do. As you can see, it's already making relatively good progress in installing onto the hard drive. Okay, I'm afraid we're back to the slightly low-tech way for this next bit because the minute I restart the system, we'll lose the capture card feed. So I'm just filming straight off the, uh, videoing rather straight off the screen. So that installation is done. So hopefully, if we say restart, we'll kick the disc out. There it goes. Ah, there we go. As long as we actually get to the desktop without the kernel panicking again. And there we go, we're to the desktop without needing the install disk. Okay, at uh, exactly 10 minutes past nine in the evening, we are finally installed. Phew, so welcome to the HeyQ desktop, or HiQ desktop, however you want to pronounce it. Um, as I said, this is a really nice little operating system once you can actually get it going. So I'll give you a, a brief overview. So this I was explained as a desktop. Um, this here is the, if you like, the hard drive or the root directory. So host system trash. You notice the windows themselves have separate um, menu options, menu bars per window, and the actual title bar is not full screen or well, full window, it only goes in the corner there, which I quite like. Closing a window, like so, we've got a trash can, very much like the Mac. Uh, and then in this corner we have this fixed window, or fixed item here, but I don't think it will stretch back and forth. Will it move? It might move, no. And this is called the tracker. And from that we can bring up various system information dialogues. We can also navigate the rest of our filing system. So we've got, for example, applications, demonstrations, desktops, preferences, and the like. So you can see all the onboard software that comes with it, including things like the terminal that we'll come back to in a minute. So first thing we can do is we can actually interface with the Wi-Fi. If your laptop has Wi-Fi, this will probably support the drivers for it. It says it is here on the Mac, so we'll just pick my Wi-Fi access, which is that one. It's going to ask for the password, and this is where we're going to do a very brief jump cut in a moment. Okay, yep, so I'm not uh, broadcasting my Wi-Fi key to the world. Uh, so we'll say always allow for the keychain access. And hopefully that's actually got us um, internet online we can check that that's why application sorry terminal now what i have noticed about haiku is its terminal is suspiciously like unix or linux so for example if i ls i can have a complete listing of the directory you know cd slash no, cd desktop there we go so that's very very uh, linux unix like i can even call applications like if config there we go how we spell right which anyone who uses linux or unix will recognize that as being identical so this is definitely running on a unix shell so hopefully we are actually now connected now this had a very interesting web browser which i see if i can find the web browser should be installed web positive there we are There we go. Fortunately, my uh, network connection just dropped out for no apparent reason. 
So let's just see what this web browser will actually do. I've never heard used this one before. I believe it's based on the WebKit. So let's go to uh, www. Let's head over to Wi-Fi Sheet if we can. Has loaded the YouTube in. Let's just see how well that plays. Okay, well that seems to be working all right. So let's just go straight through to the YouTube site. Still, that's not bad at all, actually. So, yeah, the web browser is actually quite impressive, and that's very usable. Let's close that down and close our terminal down. Now, if we go back to Preferences, application, sorry, and go Software Updater, we can now check to see if there's any updates needed. And yes, there's quite a few updates. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to install all these because obviously we need to make sure we keep everything patched as quickly and efficiently as possible. And as you can see, it's now going to load 61 additional packages that need downloading and installing. So we'll let that do that and we'll come back. Okay then, so now we've got the updates installed. Let's go back to applications and I want to show you this one called Haiku Depot. So we now have under category a choice of options of what we want to look at so we can say graphics productivity education let's say productivity so there is LibreOffice make sure you take the featured packages option off because I didn't do that and obviously we didn't see it. So there's LibreOffice uh, and I'll now say to install LibreOffice. So I click install and it will now grab the package off the internet and download it for us. So we'll say apply changes. Okay I think we are, are we just about done 100%? Yes we're done. So now we can, from here, we can click open up, click open LibreOffice, sorry. Or if I now go and look in my Applications tab, it should show up. Yes, it does. It's there under Applications. So I could select it from here, for example. Now LibreOffice becoming something of a staple for the open source freeware marketplace. So, for example, you now get it bundled with Raspberry Pi. It pretty much runs on everything. Um, operating systems where there isn't a port really do suffer. So, so it's actually great to see LibreOffice here on Haiku. And there we go. So we've got the standard calculator, we've got PowerPoint, drawing, maths, database. We'll just say we'll have a text document. And again, I remind you, this is more or less compatible with Microsoft Office and is, in my opinion, just as good. So there we go, and we can now type away a document again. And as expected, let's just have a look, see what we've got on the fonts loaded on the system. It's probably not an awful lot on here. There's a few kind of generic, basic fonts. I think you'd have to add fonts library separate. But yeah, it works all right. It's certainly very usable. So we've got basic productivity software on here, which is fantastic. I'm going to close this now. We'll say no, we don't want to save. We'll also we'll close the depot for now because we're done with that. I just want to show you some of the tools that are actually on here as standard. So applications. Now, where is it? If I remember which one it is. Okay, down the bottom here 
and you'll see Wonder Brush. And this is actually a uh, sort of like a paintbrush type program. But what makes this a bit different to others, we can turn our radius to that down. Again, I'm trying to paint on the trap pad. Yeah, that probably wasn't the best color to use, but <laughs> oh dear. Um... So we've got sort of, you know, the basic tools, we've got the fill can. But what you'll notice, you actually have layers. So I can, for example, create a new layer. This is very sort of Photoshop-esque. And if I then select my paintbrush tool again, that's actually the pencil tool. Select my paintbrush tool, there we go. I haven't quite figured out how you actually move things yet, but um, I'm told there's a way to do it. But basically the point I'm trying to make is that um, all this is uh, actually vectors. So each of these is treated as a separate vector object, which is unusual for a paint project, because usually they work in a bitmap, uh, rasterization format. But everything here is actually a, bit, a, um, a vector. But yeah, it, it's an interesting, and I think potentially quite usable little paint program once I've haven't out the best way for that to work. So it's sort of paintbrush, but with a sort of Photoshop-esque to it. So yeah, that again, could be quite useful, quite productive. And I think you can save out, what can we export as? And you've got all sorts of formats, including uh, Windows icon, Apple icon, GIF, BMP, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, Photoshop even. So it actually will export out as the native PSD format. Um, yeah, cursor source, bitmap source, Adobe Illustrator. So it'll actually export the vectors out, which is impressive. So yeah, that's actually quite usable um, and well worth a look. Again, we'll just discard that. Okay, so that is a very brief tour of Haiku, the x86 build for PC and Mac, or basically anything with an Intel or I guess an AMD based processor. Um, yeah, really like this OS, still a lot to learn. It's still only in beta, so they do warn you about not trying to use this or for anything important or to sort of back up data on a regular basis, which I can understand. But yeah, overall, I have to say I'm really impressed. I'm gonna drop the link to their website in the description box below. As you've seen, a word of warning, getting this set up and running can be a little bit of an uphill struggle, but we managed it in the end, so that's good. Um, but yeah, if you've got the time and the option or spare machine to try it on, I can definitely recommend trying out Haiku. So there we go. There's a brief demonstration of Haiku, the Unix operating system for x86 processor computers. And for me, it's allowed us to give this old MacBook a new lease of life. So from myself and everyone here at Wi-Fi Sheep, we hope you had a wonderful Christmas and we wish you a happy new year for 2019. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, bye for now.